Hi, welcome to Craft Beer Geek um, and the first ever episode where I'm going to bring you my opinions on a selection of some of my favourite craft beers available. Today I have something very special. I've got a beer that's only available to Equity Punks through either referrals or through um, a weekly competition which I was lucky enough to win for uh, designing some Brewdog Top Trumps. So what you've got here is Brewdog Death or Glory. So let's, let's unbox it I think. It comes in a lovely wooden box with uh, Brewdog branding, Death and Glory logo, uh, made by Wooden Box UK. Uh, inside it's got some wrapping around it to keep it nice and snug. That's the label. Quite plain, quite understated. Uh, it's got the cask numbers on there, so it's cask 211, 212 and 221. Uh, lovely shiny red label, plain plain, plain cap. Um, it also comes with this beautiful whiskey snifting glass, uh, again with the Death or Glory logo, uh, which should make it great for getting some of the aromas. So before I go on to tasting it and letting you know what it smells like and tastes like, I'm going to give you some of the specifics about the beer style and this particular this particular beer. So uh, it was brewed in 2011, so it's five years old. Uh, it's an ice distilled Belgian golden ale. Uh, a Belgian golden ale um, was originally developed uh, by the Moor Mortgat Brewery, I believe, uh, after World War II as a response to the growing popularity of Pilsner beers in Europe uh, but generally has a fuller body and mouthfeel uh, than the Pilsner that it was designed to compete against. So a Belgian golden ale is usually yellow, yellow to medium golden colour, uh, it's got a fruity spicy aroma, uh, quite low malt and hop aroma um, and usually a low ABV so nothing like this one which is 26.1% uh, ABV because uh, of the ice dis distillation. This particular Belgian ale has also been aged uh, in 10 separate oak barrels for four and a half years and then James and Martin have selected their favourite three so cast 211, 212 and 221 and each of those three casks were um, originally used for a different type of spirit so uh, I'm guessing there's seven casks still sitting somewhere and it'd be quite nice to know whether they'll emerge one day. Uh, but of the three casks, one is a bourbon cask from Kentucky. Uh, no real information as to which bourbon in particular, although it could be Heaven Hill because they've used those before. Uh, one is from the Isle of Arran, uh, which their whiskey kind of is a grass-like nose, sweet biscuity tones, uh, so that might come through. Uh, and finally they've got one from the Gervin Lowland Grain Distillery. Uh, in Ayrshire and that whiskey is kind of a rich in vanilla, toffee, honey, caramelised fruit so I'm hoping that that's going to come through in, in the taste. Um, I've chosen to drink this beer at room temperature. Uh, if you have any differing opinions, think it should be at a uh, different temperature, leave a comment, tweet, let me know uh, and maybe I'll do a second taste at a different temperature. So let's get it into a glass and see what it tastes like. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm not quite sure. Oh, bit of carbonation. Nice little fizz. Although I can't imagine that's going to stay around very long, but you never know. So appearance first. Let's pour a little into glass. Oh yeah, look, it's quite fizzy actually. Much fizzier than I uh, thought it was going to be. Uh, I kind of expected it to be quite a flat a flat beer, although they seem to, the bubbles are still some carbonation and bubbles there. It's quite a, a rich dark golden colour, um, it's presumably taking a lot of that colour from those three oak barrels, as you'd expect for a 25.1% a ABV the, the alcohol's sticking to the side of the glass. 
but there's definitely quite a bit of carbonation there. Uh, so let's have a sniff. Wow. You instantly get a reminiscent smell of, um, of oak, wood, uh, very much like the Paradox range. Um, very complex. Definitely getting some sort of toffee, caramel, maple syrup, marzipan, marmalade. Really nice smelling. Quite sweet. Get that hit of that oak. Definitely paradox coming through. Not not a really high alcohol um, smell. Very raisiny, dried fruits, figs. Really nice. Alright, so let's uh, have a taste. Cheers. Wow. You instantly get that um, that fruit coming through, that raisins, cherries, uh, quite, I think it's almost like figs, dried figs. Very easy to drink. You get almost no alcohol burn, no no harshness to it. It tastes flat. It's flat when you drink it. There's no, maybe the carbonation's gone now. A little bit of carbonation left. Definitely raisins, figs, cherries, dried fruits, dark fruits. Less of the toffee that you got um, in the aroma. Kind of reminds me of dates, sticky toffee pudding. Uh, that kind of thing. Quite salty. Um, very well balanced though. Very easy to drink for a 25.1% ABV. Um, could easily go through that whole bottle quite quickly, I think. It's a sublime, sublime drink. Yeah, that that is something special. Um, that's a really good beer. Right, well, thank you for tuning in for the for my first ever episode. Hopefully, I'll do some more. Um, if you've got any comments, any feedback, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it down below, uh, or find me on Twitter. Uh, Craft Beer Geek UK. Right, thank you.